701 years before the birth of Christ. And the mighty armies of Assyria march out to conquest and to war. Led by King Sennacherib, son of Sargon, their hosts swept westward. Westward through Syria, west to the Phoenician shores, crushing all who dared to oppose them. Sidon crumbled before their weight of arms. With Tyre besieged, King Eleuleus fled to the Isle of Cyprus. The cities of Ashdod, Ammon, Moab, and Edom surrendered. And the Assyrian hordes thundered on, on toward Jerusalem, the holy city of the Jews. There, the last broken but courageous forces of Israel had gathered. Preparations for a final and all but hopeless stand were made under the leadership of Hezekiah, king of Judah. Sergeant, sergeant of the guard. What do you see, sentry? Someone comes. Oh, your majesty. Oh, that feather of dust. <laughs> Probably a messenger, Your Majesty. Not one of ours. See those flashes of light? Yes, sire. Only Assyrian chariots carry knife blades on their wheels. Notify the captain of the guards. Signal for a parley. Eliakim. At your command, Majesty. Take Shebna the scribe and find out what our pagan friend has on his mind. I am Eliakim, keeper of the household of Hezekiah, king of Judea. Tell your Hezekiah that the great king, Sennacherib of Assyria, says thus. On what can you put your confidence now? On help from Egypt, that broken reed? On your god, Jehovah, who has been powerless against my king thus far? Certainly not on the few remaining men you have. We have sufficient to... Ah, if each of your men could grasp ten reins, I and your women and children too, you'd not have enough to hold the horses of our chariots. This is Sennacherib's offer. Kneel before him, surrender your pledges, and he'll give you 2,000 horses, if you have enough men to ride them. Let us lower our voices, or speak in Syrian. It is not wise to discuss treaties in the hearing of those who man the walls. Indeed, they are the very ones who should hear the words of Sennacherib. Listen, you starving ones. Hear the words of the great king, the king of Assyria. Your one hope is to make peace with Sennacherib. Lay down your arms and he'll give you food and wine, water from his cistern, lead you to a land of grain and vineyards, a land of plenty. Are you still dreaming that your Jehovah can save you? Ask yourselves, have the gods of other nations saved them from the might of Assyria? Where are the gods of Hamath and Arpad? Where are the gods of Sparvaim? Speak, men of Judah, what is your answer? Afternoon, as Hezekiah prayed for help, the vast Assyrian hordes advanced on Jerusalem. When darkness had fallen, two daring men slipped out by the small gate. Are you going to 
hone that thing all night. A dull blade binds in the bone. Man needs rest before a battle. Think of the loot we'll miss if we're not in the front line by daybreak. And then he said, think of the loot we'll miss if we're not ready by daybreak. Had you any chance to count their numbers? It would have been like counting the blades of grass. Their campfire stretched to the farthest hills, Your Majesty. You've done well. Eliakim, see to the sentries. Have the others get all the rest they can. I dare say we'll all be busy very early. Your Majesty, the prophet Isaiah. Your Majesty, I've spent much of the day in the temple praying. I was about to go again, perhaps for the last time. Will you come with me? There is no need, Your Majesty. The Lord Jehovah has given me his answer to your prayers. Yeah. He shall not come into this city, nor shoot an arrow there. Neither shall he come before it with shields. For I will defend this city to save it for mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. For mine own sake and for my servant David's sake. Even as Isaiah had prophesied, the rising of the sun brought no attack. Only a distant cloud of dust marking the route of a retreating army. And when Hezekiah led a scouting party to investigate, of the Lord had struck the camp of the enemy, slaying 185,000. And the few warriors of Assyria who survived fled to their native land. All the people of Judea joined with their king in giving thanks to the Lord. And in the days that followed, the Lord revealed many things to Isaiah, matters of such importance that he had them written down for the guidance of his people. The Lord has told me, Your Majesty, there will be no more warfare in your lifetime. But in the years to come, there will be great trouble for our land. Jerusalem will be destroyed. Our people will be made slaves. But this will not be for all time, for he promises to send the Messiah, a savior for all men. The Lord himself will give you a sign. Behold, a virgin shall bear a son and shall call his name Emmanuel. He shall come from the root of Jesse and the spirit of Jehovah shall be upon him. And in that day, he will stand as an ensign of the people. Unto him will all nations seek. And his resting place shall be glorious. The years passed by, and the centuries, and all that Isaiah prophesied was fulfilled. Jerusalem felt the iron heel of many conquerors. But through freedom and slavery, bondage and rebellion, the words of Isaiah were not forgotten. He shall come from the root of Jesse, and the spirit of Jehovah shall be upon him. Centuries later, in the land of Judea, during the reign of Herod the Great, the devout continued to pray for the fulfillment of the promise. In the village of Nazareth, among those who prayed, was a young maiden named Mary.
your betrothed works late. He is making a chest for our home. And an angel appeared unto Mary and said, Hail, thou that art highly favored, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. Behold, thou shalt bring forth a son, and shalt call his name Jesus. He shall be great, and shall be called the Son of the Highest. And the Lord God shall give him the throne of his father David, and he shall reign forever. And of his kingdom there shall be no end. How shall this be? The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore, the child to be born will be called Holy, the Son of God. Son of God. According to thy word. Very soon thereafter, Mary left to visit her cousin Elizabeth. Meanwhile, in Nazareth, Joseph was troubled by her departure. Good afternoon. Oh, here, let me. There's, there's something I must ask you. Indeed? Ever since Mary left this morning, does she want to break our betrothal? Well, she said nothing like that to me. And I'm certain she would have mentioned it if the thought had entered her mind. Ah, uh, yes, I suppose so. Didn't I hear her say she loved you when we bade her goodbye? Yes, yeah, she did, but... But what, Joseph? Why did she leave so hastily with no word as to how long she'd be gone? And with our wedding date agreed upon? If only your kinswoman had sent for her, if she had been ill, if there had been some reason for her going. There is a reason, Joseph. The angel of the Lord appeared to her in a vision. And told her to go? But why? Why Mary? We cannot question his wisdom. The things he wants us to know, he will disclose at his time. But I'm sure Mary loves you. Why, well, I'm as sure as I am that, well, that she'll come back to us. And Mary came into the hill country of Judah. Having come to the city of Judah, Mary entered the home of her kinswoman Elizabeth, the wife of Zacharias. And she entered the house and greeted Elizabeth. And Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit and exclaimed, Blessed are you among women. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior. For he has regarded the lowest state of his handmaid. For behold, henceforth all generations will call me blessed. For he who is mighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name. And his mercy is on those who fear him from generation 
to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud and the imagination of their hearts. He has put down the mighty from their thrones and exalted those of low degree. He has filled the hungry with good things and the rich he has sent empty away. He has helped his servant Israel in remembrance of his mercy as he spoke to our fathers, to Abraham, and to his posterity forever. And Mary abode with her kinfolk for about three months and then returned to her own home. It was then that she told Joseph of the message given her from God. And Joseph, hearing these things, was deeply concerned. Until one night, when as he lay asleep, an angel of the Lord came to him and said, Joseph, Joseph, son of David, do not fear to take Mary, your wife. For that which is conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will bear a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For it is he who will save his people from their sins. And so Mary and Joseph became husband and wife. dwelling in the lands of Syria, Israel, Samaria, and Judea, by command of His Excellency Gaius Caesar Octavianus, August ruler of the Roman Empire, all the world shall be counted, listed, and taxed. What? More taxes? Isn't there any end of the taxing? Silence, you dogs. In obedience to this command, all men and women shall within 30 days return to the cities of their forebearers, there to be enrolled. Failure to obey will be punished by death. To the cities of our forebearers. It won't be an easy journey for you. I've always wanted to see Bethlehem. Not long thereafter, Joseph and Mary started the long journey on the road to Bethlehem, the city of their forebears. Last, they saw the lights of Bethlehem in the distance. Am I a servant? No. Am I a slave? No. I'm your wife and entitled to a little consideration. Oh, my dear, I know, and my feet hurt too, but with all this business. Business or no business, I'm going to bed. You're the keeper of this inn? Yes, my lord, yes. Uh, unfortunately... I need lodging for myself and my family. I'd be honored to supply it, but my rooms are filled to overflowing. One room will do. At any other time, Your Excellency, but with the enrollment going on, half the people of the world on the road, I... <clears throat> I've already rented the servants' quarters, even my son's room. There's nothing left. Nothing at all. Except... 
Three coppers for a mug of green wine. A silver coin for sleeping space on a mud floor. Another for a piece of this moldy mutton. Mutton? That's lamb. It tastes like old camel. Well, if it isn't fit for your fine taste. If these scratches, I'll eat my fill if it kills me. Uh, I have to go out for a moment. Now, when I'm gone, give a message to my wife. Yes, ma'am. Tell her to spend the night with her sister. I've just rented our room. Just a moment. If you're looking for a lodging, it's not here. The inn's full. Are you sure? I should be. It's my inn. But I must have shelter for my wife. Well, then ask through the town. Knock on every door. I have for hours. My wife is going to have a child. It's almost her time. Oh, I wish I could help. Look, there's a stable down back of the inn. It's not much lodging, but it's better than nothing. Thank you. Thank you, my friend. Wait a minute. Here, take this. No point in guiding anyone else to this door tonight. You can't stay here, Mary. I'll have to find some other place. This will be quite all right. Please help me down, Joseph. After all, before David was a king, he was a shepherd. He must have spent many a night with his flocks. That night, in the hills nearby, there were shepherds guarding their flocks. Here now, youngster, hold still. Eleven travelers in that last party. Why, that makes more than, more than five scores since the sunset. You're supposed to be watching the flocks, not counting the people. Month in and month out, I can see sheep. Once in a lifetime can I see the roads crowded from dawn to midnight. Even so, you are still watching sheep. What? Human sheep. The sheep of Israel. Beating obedience to the orders of Rome. Trotting peacefully to the governor's shearing pens. This isn't a shearing, just a tallying. An enrollment, a census taking. First a tally, then a clipping, then a census, then more taxes. More taxes? You really think so? I don't think, I know. With the Romans, it's always been more, and more, and more. And will be until our shepherds' crooks turn to spears. That kind of talk, I don't like it. It can start trouble. Why, well, after all, we're part of their empire. They extended their treaty of peace to Herod. Treaty? A privilege to live on the lands that once were ours, as long as we pay taxes, bow to them, bend their will. Our time will come. It was promised by our prophets, written in our scriptures, that a Messiah will come to our people. Yes, but when? Who knows? We must wait, have patience. I have waited all my life. A day and a night. Our people have waited over 700 years. We have had leaders before. Jeroboam the younger, Judas Maccabee, Hezekiah, it will be well worth a hundred centuries of waiting for the greatest of all. In every generation, our young men have said, soon, soon, and dreamed their dreams. I did in my youth, and my father and his father before him. So perhaps will your children and your children's children. Perhaps, perhaps. But as long as we know the Messiah will come someday, our task is to wait. Wait and be good sheep. Aye, good sheep, but at least sheep with a hope. A 
And as they watched over their flocks, lo, the angel of the Lord came upon them. And they were afraid. And the angel said, Fear not, for behold, I bring you glad tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. For unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And this shall be a sign unto you. Ye shall find the babe wrapped in swaddling clothes, lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace, goodwill to men. the child. Of course. The Savior. Yes. Yes, the Savior. Then you know. The angel of the Lord appeared to us. Tonight, in the hills. There were many with him. Many. All singing the praises of God. It was a wonder beyond all wonders. And so to the world, God's greatest gift was given. The only begotten Son of God. The Prince of Peace born of a virgin and cradled in a manger. in Judea during the 36th year of the reign of Herod the Great. Eight, nine, ten. Your rent is paid to the end of the month. May your shop prosper. I have many orders. Well, go right ahead. Don't let me interrupt you. I was just down collecting my rent from Joel, the coppersmith, and I said to myself, why not drop in on your new tenant and see how he's doing? Looks as though you have enough work for uh, two men. Oh, yes, but I'll be able to handle it myself. Well, not for long, not if you stay here. 
We've been needing a clever woodworker since old Eliezer died. You'll make an excellent living, what with the hometown work and uh, the commissions from barrels and boxes and for the travelers. Well, my shop in Nazareth was on the caravan route, too. It faced right on the... Nazareth? You're not still thinking of going back there. Well, it's my home. My wife's home, too. We'd be there still if it hadn't been for the census taking. The best thing that ever happened to you, believe me. And I say that because I mean it. Not just to keep this building rented. Why, a fine shop and home is this? I could rent ten times a month. A double the sum, I ask. Truly, I speak from my heart. Out of an old man's interest in you, your good wife, and fine young son. Now, if you'll just take my advice. The best thing that ever happened to you, believe me, think of your son, your firstborn. Do you want him to grow up in Galilee, a back country, know nothing? Well, there are wise rabbis in Nazareth, too, some of the very ah, best. Ah, but here you are a mere morning's walk from Jerusalem. From the great temple, the very center of culture, the wisest men of our people. Your son could even study at their feet, become a scribe, God willing. That would fill you with pride, eh? More than make your dreams come true. My son's future will be as Jehovah wills it. Amen. Will you do us the honor of sharing our supper? Yes, we'd be most pleased if you would. Why, uh, uh, no, no, I can't. Uh, my son's wife grumbles all evening if I... Some other time, thank you. Oh, I had no idea the hour was so late. I'll have to be going. Think over what I've been saying, young man. Over what I've been saying. Would you like some fig? No, no thanks. I was talking with the innkeeper's wife at the well today. Oh? She said that this place had been empty all summer, that Eli was crowing over the fact that he had finally rented it. Yes, I'm afraid his interest is more in his purse than for our future. But still... If you want to go back to Nazareth, I'll be happy in Nazareth. If you choose to stay here, I'll be happy here. If only I knew what was best for the child. Ever since I was a boy, I can remember hearing Judeans boast, if a man would be rich, let him go to the north. If he would be wise, let him come south. But we know that there are those in Galilee who are poor, and not all in Judea are wise. I'd rather listen to the words of David. Promotion come neither from the east, nor from the west, nor from the south. But God is the judge. Well, at any rate, there's no need to decide tonight. In a week, we shall take our son to Jerusalem. His ordinance of redemption at the great temple. And your right of purification. I've been richly blessed. No. There's nothing to be frightened of. I know, but it's so... so big.
I beg your pardon, sir, but could you... Welcome. Welcome in the name of the Lord. Thank you. My wife and My I... My name is Simeon. Please, may I see the child? Long ago, the Holy Spirit revealed to me that I should not see death until I had seen the Lord's Christ with my own eyes. Blessed be the mercy of God. Lord, now let us thy servant depart in peace according to thy word. For my eyes have seen thy salvation, which thou hast prepared in the presence of all people, a light for the revelation of the Gentile and for the glory of thy people, Israel. May his blessings be upon you. May his light shine upon you. For behold, this child is set for the fall and rising of many in Israel, that the thoughts of many hearts will be revealed. But two, a sword will pierce through your own soul. Thanks be to the Lord Jehovah. Our thanks to him for what we have seen this day. Who are you? And why do you bring this child to the house of the Lord Jehovah? I am Joseph Bar Jacob, and this is my wife, Mary. The child is my firstborn, and his name is Jesus. Is the babe without blemish? He is. Place the child upon the altar. It has been written that when Abraham so placed his firstborn upon the altar, and was prepared to sacrifice his beloved son to the Lord Jehovah, the angel of the Lord called out from heaven, saying, Abraham, Abraham, lay not thy hand upon the lad, nor do anything unto him. For now I know thou fearest God, seeing thou hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, from me. And the angel of the Lord called unto Abraham a second time and said, By myself have I sworn, saith the Lord, that because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thine only son, that in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed, as the stars of the heaven, as the sand which is upon the seashore, and thy seed shall possess the gates of his enemies. And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed, because thou hast obeyed my voice. May the blessings of Jehovah fall upon this child, firstborn of the seed of the seed of Abraham. And even as Abraham's son was redeemed and returned to his father, so may this child be by token redeemed and returned unto his parents. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Amen. Amen. the gates, I knew. Yes, even before I saw the child, my heart felt peace. Just as it is written on the scrolls, a star has come out of Jacob. A scepter has risen from Israel. And out of Jacob has come he who will have dominion. The child's parents, you say, were just ordinary people? They were, like us. The child, just like any other child? Yes. And what makes you so sure? I... I knew. The good woman Anna knew, too. But how? How do you know when love comes to your heart? How do you know when fear leaves you and contentment enters your mind? From the moment they entered the temple gate, I knew. Yes, even before I saw the child. And then, when I held him in my arms, 
The words of Isaiah seem to be sounding in my ears. Unto us a child is born. Unto us a son is given. And the government shall be on his shoulder. And his name shall be called the mighty God, the Prince of Peace. Oh, I could talk all night of the glory of this day. But it's growing late. In just a time. minute. What you have told us just now, don't tell every man you meet. Would you have me keep the coming of the Messiah a secret? If the child is the Messiah, yes. Grandfather wouldn't have said he was unless he was sure. I'm not arguing what he thinks. Worship him all you wish here with us. But don't go shouting your tidings through the streets. But if it's true... Is the child of the Herodian line? Of course not. That's He's there, a... Dora. There may be something in what Joel says. Maybe. I only repair the sandals for the palace guards. But my ears hear plenty of Herod's gentle love for any who threaten his dynasty. He came to the throne by slaughter. Stayed on it by murder. Preserves it now for his breed by assassination. Let him hear one word of a new prince. A rival to the house of Herod. Just a caravan asking directions. Grandfather. Yes, my dear? If the child is the Messiah, could even Herod have the power to harm him? I... I don't know. He is such a little child. But don't worry. I shall be careful of whom I tell. You'd better warn that widow woman, too. Anna? Yes. First thing in the morning. Good. If the child is the Messiah, and I'm not saying he isn't, the less Herod knows about it, the better. Where was the caravan from? Arabia, judging by their accents. But it wasn't a caravan. Oh? No. Just three travelers on camels asking the way to the palace. Your Excellencies. Your Majesty, the learned envoys from the lands to the east, their Excellencies Melchior, Gaspar, Balthazar. Welcome to the land of Israel. We are undeserving of your gracious hospitality. My aide tells me you have gifts to offer of some sort. Unworthy trifles, your majesty. Merely token specimens to bespeak the friendship and respect of our homelands. Your modesty credits your sovereigns. I'll be most pleased to accept your gifts. Uh, but your majesty. This is most we embarrassing, thought you understood, your great majesty. King. Come, come, speak up. Haven't you them with you? The fact of the matter is, your majesty, our poor gifts are for the new king. The new king? What new king? He whose coming is written in the stars. The new king of the Jews. Surely your court astrologers have divined the portents? Yes, yes, they, they probably have. You see, I've just returned from the baths at Kailoroi. But I doubt that my advisors are apt at interpreting such signs as you are. Just who is this successor to my throne? We thought you could tell us that, Your Majesty. That is why we sought this audience. I see. The stars did not give names, Your Majesty. Only that a great new king would appear. We thought that you would know and tell us, Your Majesty. Of course, of course. Pelinus, see that our guests are given quarters worthy of their state. I will speak with my advisors and find out what they have learned.
And thereupon Herod sent to the temple, summoning the high priests and the scribes of the people. His Majesty Herod the Great, King of all Israel. When I sent for the most learned priests of the temple, I hardly expected so many. Actually, the matter at hand is too trivial for such a distinguished delegation. We were only told to come, Your Majesty, not the reason for the summons. Yes. While at the baths, I had a small argument with a certain nobleman about the sacred writings of our people. Do they foretell where the Messiah will be born? Yes. In Bethlehem of Judea. Oh. It is written by the prophet. And thou, Bethlehem, land of Judah, art in no wise least among the princes of Judah. For out of thee shall come forth a governor, which shall be shepherd of my people Israel. You're all agreed? Yes, you may. You may go. Bring me those three star interpreters. I have the information you seek, if your calculations are correct. There can be no doubt, Your Majesty. We beheld it with our own eyes. The stars Mithrad and Veshtar. In Roman language, Jupiter and Saturn. Both were in conjunction in the constellation called Pisces. The portent was unmistakable, Your Majesty. When did this conjunction occur? Two years ago. And it is your interpretation that the new king was born then? Perhaps then. Perhaps not until this year. But his star has appeared. There can be no doubt of that. I see. You will find him in Bethlehem. Go and search out carefully concerning the young child. At once, Your Majesty. And when you have found him... Yes, Majesty? Bring me word that I, too, may come and worship him. And when they had heard the king, they went their way. And lo, the star which they had seen in the east went before them till it came to rest over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced exceedingly with great joy. And going into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They offered him gifts, gold and frankincense and myrrh. The beasts are saddled. What's delaying Melchior? What always delays him? That turban? The turban. Well, a good day for traveling. Are the camels ready? Ready and waiting, as we've been. We'll be fortunate to reach the Valley of Acor before dark. With your consent, I would like to suggest that we change our return route. Oh? By going south, we can skirt the lower end of the Dead Sea and then turn east. That's a lot longer. But it avoids Jerusalem. Last night I had a dream, a most vivid dream. We were approaching King Herod, when suddenly a great shadow fell upon us. And as it passed, his face had become the face of a jackal, and his scepter had turned into a sword that dripped with blood. A warning, definitely a warning. We'll take the road to the south. Helenus. <sighs> Helenus! Your Majesty. 
Majesty. Open the curtain. But, Your Majesty, the night air. Open this. Father. It's not quite so bright as it was, sire. That's brighter. Far brighter. Close the curtain. A sip of herb tea might ease your pain, sire. Those three from the west. Those three from the east. They haven't returned. No, sir. You're certain? Positive, sire. The watch has been instructed to inform me the moment they appear. They lied. They lied to me. Trophus. Call Trophus. Call whom, sire? Call Trochus. The captain of the mounted guard. Get Trochus. Hurry. Two years. Two years. It was two years, they said, wasn't it? They, sir? The stargazers from the east. The prophecy they read in the stars. When they first saw it. Two years ago, sir. Two years. The child couldn't possibly be older than that. Not at the most. No, sir. Your Majesty. Rouse your troop. You ride at once for Bethlehem. Aye, sire. When you get there, kill every male child under the age of two. Go. As Your Majesty commands. Now the herb tea. Now. Troop, ho! Yeah. They started, sir. An hour. They should be there in an hour. Or a little more. Yeah. Open the curtain. Tie it back. But the physician said... Tie it back. I want to see the star go out. He's all right. He's sleeping fine. It's something else. What is it, dear? I had a dream, but it, it was more than a dream. The, the angel of the Lord appeared before me. He said, rise. Take the child and his mother and flee to Egypt. Egypt? And stay till I tell you. For King Herod is about to search for the child to destroy him. It's all right, my dear. We'd better start packing. Yes.
Joseph. Hey, sir. Take two men and go out the far end. All right. Let's get the job done. And they left the land of Israel and fled to the south, to Egypt. After the victories of Julius and Augustus Caesar, the entire Western world was enslaved by Imperial Rome, from the British Isles to the lands beyond the Danube, from the deserts of Africa to the borders of India. By Roman mandate, Herod the Great ruled Palestine. His tyrannies drove thousands of desperate families to voluntary exile in Cyprus, Syria, and Egypt. Among them, Joseph Bar Jacob, carpenter, his wife Mary and their infant son. But Egypt was only a refuge to Joseph, not his beloved homeland. And when an angel appeared to him in a dream saying that those who would destroy the child were dead, his thoughts were constantly on the land of Israel. It's a fine bit of work. You have a hand with tools. A man should do well the thing he likes to do. Mm. Still, I'm surprised to find a craftsman of such skill in so small a village. You should go to Alexandria. I could give you references to a man there who makes fine furniture. Thank you. You're very kind. There. It's finished. And stronger than before. Thank you. And if you should change your mind about going to the city... When I leave here, it shall be to return to my homeland. Israel? Israel. I see. I dare say a lot of Egypt's guests will be heading northward now. Well, why do you say now? King Herod is dead over a month ago. Are you certain? Well, beyond doubt. Caesar Augustus already has confirmed Archelaus to be ethnarch. Of Israel? No, just Judea, Idumea, and Samaria. Thank you. Thank you for telling us. I'll uh, send my slaves around this evening for the bench. And good fortune. We can go back now, can't we? Well, Archelaus is Herod's son. But his power doesn't reach to Galilee. No, no, not to Galilee. You've missed it, too. It will be good to see Nazareth again. they returned into Galilee to their own city, Nazareth. And the child grew, and the favor of God was upon him.
Blessed art thou, O Lord, our God, King of the universe, who has sanctified us by thy commandments and commanded us to kindle the Sabbath light. May our home be consecrated, O God, by thy light. Mother? Yes, dear? What is it you touch? It is the mezuzah, my son. This is the name of the Lord Jehovah, whom we love. And all of our people who love the Lord have a mezuzah by their doors. Inside are written words of the Lord. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is one Lord, and thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thine heart, and with all thy soul, and with all thy might. And these words shall be in thine heart, and thou shalt teach them diligently unto thy children. And thou shalt write them upon the posts in thy house. The mezuzah reminds us that God is always with us. In our home and outside it too. And Moses spake in the ears of all the congregation of Israel the words of this song until they were ended. Hear, hear, O ye heavens, and I will speak. And hear, O earth, the words of my mouth. My doctrine shall drop as the rain. My speech shall distill as the dew, as the small rain upon the tender herb, and the showers upon the grass. Because I will publish the name of the Lord, the sky of the greatness unto our God. He is the rock. His work is perfect. For all his ways are judgment, a God of truth and without iniquity. Just and right is he. You may pass the study scrolls, my sons. As you know, there will be no school tomorrow or until after the week of the Passover feast. During that time, think well upon all you have learned especially those of you who will travel to the great temple for your bar mitzvah. When you are questioned by the scribes at the great temple, do not be afraid. You have learned, and you have learned well. I know you will be a credit to Nazareth. My prayers will be with you. May the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent one from the other. And his parents went to Jerusalem every year at the feast of the Passover. And when he was 12 years old, they went up according to custom. And when the feast was ended, they started upon their return journey. And toward the end of the first day, they came to the place where the others from Nazareth had chosen to rest for the night. This looks like a good spot. I don't see him anywhere. Oh, he's, he's likely waiting in the brook with the other boys. It's not like him to be gone all day. It's like all boys on the way home from their bar mitzvah. Why, I remember the trip home from mine. My parents caught hardly a glimpse of me till they reached the front door of their home. Now, don't you worry. As soon as I've tethered friend Goliath, I'll go look for the boy. No, sir. We haven't seen him since we left Jerusalem. Are you certain? Yes, sir. We thought he was with you. We'll return to the city. If he comes back while we're gone, tell him to wait here. And they returned to Jerusalem seeking him. And they found him in the temple among the teachers, listening to them and asking them questions. And all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. My son, my son. 
Why have you treated us so? Behold, your father and I have been looking for you anxiously. How is it that you have sought me? Did you not know that I must be in my father's house? And he went down with them and came to Nazareth and was obedient to them. And his mother kept all these things in her heart. And Jesus increased in wisdom and stature and in favor with God and man. The years passed on. In faraway Rome, the Emperor Augustus died and Tiberius assumed the title of Caesar. Archelaus was deposed and replaced by his brother Herod Antipas. Then in the 15th year of Tiberius' reign, a new governor was sent to Caesarea, capital city of the Palestinian territory. Hear ye, hear ye, to all the subjects of Palestine, citizens, free men, and slaves. By order of His Excellency Tiberius Claudius Nero, Caesar of the Imperial Empire, his honored governor of the lands of Judea, Samaria, Sinai, and Philistia, Valerius Gratus, has been recalled to other duties. By order of His Excellency Tiberius Claudius Nero, Caesar of the Imperial Empire, the new governor, procurator in command, as of this day, shall be the Honorable Pontius Pilate. Hear and obey. And here is the most valuable item in the treasury. Jewels? Rare jewels. The only ones of their kind. Records of our private agreements with those of the conquered who have found it profitable to collaborate with us, either secretly or openly. Oh. A traitor's bribe list. No, a bit more. In addition to the separate agreements, I've added a note on each man whether he can be trusted and how far. What pressures can be used to keep each one in line? Word for word transcripts of every verbal amendment taken down by hidden scribes so the bribe takers have no idea their promises are a matter of record. I know. When Annas Rufus opened that casket for me, I thought it was a waste of effort too, but we're not dealing with Gauls or Celts or Carthaginians here. We're forced to deal with Asiatics. Men with oriental minds, men who scheme and twist and maneuver until black seems white and your simplest statement becomes a grant of power. I assume your orders are the same as mine have been. Increase the grain shipments, collect the taxes, and keep the peace over a province of 500,000 square stadia with one undermanned legion. I've been promised fresh troops to bring the legion up to strength. Five legions couldn't keep the peace here, no, nor ten, without the help these scrolls represent. The Sheikh Al Bouquet, the Tetrarch Herod Antipas, the High Priest Caiaphas, jackals, skulking the Roman lion for his leaving. Ah, but scavengers, we've chosen to be kings of all the jackals, so the lion may gorge in peace. I suggest we read through them together. I guarantee you, it'll be time well spent. Concessions on their religious taxes, concessions on their laws, concessions on what they call graven images. Oh, you'd have thought we were the vanquished and they were the conquerors. Don't paw me. Get out. Go. Oh. Promises, amendments, revisions. I thought we'd be unrolling scrolls all night. It won't be so bad after you get used to it. Six months from now. I'll never get used to mealy-mouthed haggling and I don't intend to. I'll have a talk with this Caiaphas when we get to Jerusalem. With his beard in your hand and your sword at his throat? It's a very persuasive argument. For a centurion subjecting a village, but hardly befitting for the governor of a province. You married a soldier. Can't expect him to turn statesman overnight. Tiberius told you this post required a diplomat as well as a soldier. It was diplomats who made the mess. At least you can give diplomacy a chance. Diplomacy is a fancy scabbard, useless without a sword. But without the protection of the scabbard, the sword can dull and rust. 
Not if it's kept in use. These jackals have bathed the moon so long they believe it rises and sets at their own command. Well, I'll soon put an end to that. I'll teach them who their master really is. But three days' journey to the east, the people of Israel were already gathering to hear a man tell of a higher power than Pilate, or of Rome itself. An intense man come from the wilderness to the banks of the Jordan. A man fearing neither Tiberius nor Herod, but with the courage to proclaim, There is but one authority, and that is Jehovah, the Almighty God. Give witness to him. Repent your sins. The kingdom of heaven is at hand. It was written by the prophets. Prepare the way of the Lord. Make his path straight. Now I say to you, the day of the coming is close upon you. Woe unto those who are unprepared. Let each man look into his own heart. Consult his soul and find his own answer. Hear this warning, you who are proud in your robes of self-righteousness. Take heed those who are arrogant with the strength and carelessness of youth. Think carefully, you who are devout in semblance only, but sinful within your hearts. The day is coming when you will stand alone before his judgment. On that day, there will be neither slave nor master, neither subject nor king. In his eyes, there will be only the worthy and the unworthy. Hear me, children of Israel. The time is short and the wickedness of our land is great. The seven deadly sins rage through Palestine like a plague, from the humblest hut to the greatest palaces. I, even in the halls of the mighty, there is no light. Do you dare to speak against the Tetrarch? I speak against sin, be it Herod's or any man's. Not yet. <laughs> but even if a man has sinned as grievously as Herod, or flaunted an evil life, as has this woman he calls a wife, there is still time to repent, to be cleansed by the waters of baptism. When the new governor came up to Jerusalem, he was a guest at the palace of Herod Antipas. Apologies, Excellency, if I intrude upon a private meditation. No, I'm no soul-searching philosopher. I came out for fresh air, not inspiration. I'm not accustomed to the strength of your native wine. Ah, one of the few passable products of this miserable land. Wine, dates, and taxes. That's about all Israel has that's worth the taking. Strange. Hmm? That her people love her so much and a king so little. Her people don't know better. They haven't traveled. I was raised and educated in Rome. After a man has lived at the very hub of the world, savored the pleasures to be had there, <laughs> believe me, Excellency, I am as much a Roman at heart as you are. Indeed. Being loyal to the Empire, knowing the problems here as I do, it's been bitter experience to me to see previous governors taken in by grasping and greedy men like Annas and Caiaphas, men with only their own interests at heart, not Rome's. As a matter of fact, I've written several long letters to Tiberius. Perhaps he discussed them with you. He mentioned them. Ah. Your background, Excellency, has been that of a soldier. I've always found soldiers to be practical men. 
Shall we be practical? By all means. Good. Your instructions are to increase the taxes, correct? <sighs> no. I haven't set spies on you. I know Tiberius. Unfortunately, the Jewish religion does not permit its people to work upon the Sabbath. That leaves only six days of the week for labor. It takes all the produce of one for a peasant to feed his family and himself, of another for the rent of his land, of two more to pay his taxes to Rome. And all he can earn on the rest to meet the temple ties demanded by Caiaphas. So, unless your excellency can find a way to add another day to the week. You're recommending that I order Caiaphas to lower the temple tithes. Only so much water can be poured from a bucket. If more goes to the cow, the donkey must get less. When my father ruled all Palestine for Rome, there was plenty for Caesar and sufficient for the Herodian house. Now these upstarts get rich. Mere tools of men who are not even Romans or of royal blood, whilst Tiberius is denied his due. And my income is a mere fraction of my father's. There is only one thing to do, a very simple thing. To depose Caiaphas? Of course. To confiscate his fortune in Caesar's name, to force his successor to cut the temple ties to the bone. And give my backing to the Herodian line. I am at your command, Your Excellency. Such a splendid plan. It's a pity it won't work. Oh, but it will. Why? Just it... because of one thing. You. Your Excellency. You were half the man your father was, but you're not. You're a sot, Herod Antipas. A lecher, a liar, and a fool. You had a country at your feet, and the Roman Empire at your back, and you threw it away. You married a sheikh's daughter to appease your Arab subjects, and cast her out and alienated them forever. And then, to make a bad mess worse, you took your brother's wife in violation of the Jewish codes and turn the rest of your people against you. Mistakes, I admit it. But every man makes a few mistakes. But only a fool would compound them. And I've no time for fools. Give me another chance, Your Excellency. That's all I ask. While your subjects jeer at you openly, and self-styled prophets shout your shame. <sighs> that man! He, he, he's mad. Demented. He'll be forgotten in a week. Gone to the hills. He, he, it, it, it might be disastrous to take action against him now. The people still believe in him. He, oh, she's a mere nothing, a, a mosquito, a gadfly. It, it, he won't be heard of in more than one province. But about this other matter, when show me that you can rule a province, then ask it to let you reign over a kingdom. But the voice of John was not stilled. Instead, his message spread through all the lands of Palestine. There are no maybes in what he says, not him. Repent, come to baptism, or be lost forever. No matter what you are, king, scribe, or common man, it's one thing or the other, and right away. You should have seen him face up to a bunch of Pharisees there. Brood of vipers, he called them. Bear fruits befitting repentance, he told them. Don't just go around saying, Abraham is our father. God can raise children from stones. You should have heard the crowd there, moaning some of them, dropping to their knees and praying, streaming toward him right out into the river. And then he looked at all of us, but it seemed like he was looking right at me. I, I went over to him and he baptized me and maybe a hundred others too. And then he began to talk to all of us again. I will baptize you with water, he said. But he who is mightier than I is coming. The thongs of whose sandals I am not fit to untie. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Here. 
This work is done. And well done, my friend. If you get a chance, you should go hear this fellow, John the Baptist. I will. My son, will you be gone for long? It will be as the Lord wishes. Open the ears of thy children, O Lord. Open their hearts to repentance. Hear their confessions as they come forward. Grant them redemption from thy wrath. Give them the gift of thy forgiveness. Thou who art all-powerful, all-knowing, almighty. Come. Step forward in the name of the Lord thy God. Come. of God. I need to be baptized by you. Why do you come to me? Let it be so now. For thus it is fitting for us to fulfill all righteousness. And Jesus, filled by the Holy Spirit, was led into the wilderness.
When Jesus of Nazareth was baptized by John the Baptist in the waters of the Jordan, he was filled with the Holy Spirit and led into the wilderness. from his work just so long. I should have started back to my farm a week ago. And I to my shop in Dothan. But... Well, my brother will be needing me in our fishing boat, but I can't leave. Not now. If John was the Messiah, if he hadn't denied being the Messiah, I would stay on forever. But he did deny it. I heard him. We all did. As I said, if there was any hope that he was, well, even a prophet like Elijah... Ah, uh, why not wait a little longer? The Nazarene may come back. You heard what the Baptist said of him. No, I didn't. Only a dozen versions of what others say was heard from someone they know. I heard John say, there is one among you who is greater than I. I heard him say the Nazarene was the Lamb of God who would take away all the sins of the world. You heard that yourself? As clearly as I hear you. Lamb of God. Lamb of God doesn't mean Messiah. The Baptist. Are you worried because you don't know him? Yes, but I saw the spirit descend as a dove from heaven, and it remained on him. I myself did not know him. But he who sent me forth to baptize with water said to me, He on whom you see the spirit descend and remain, this is he who baptizes with the Holy Spirit. And I have seen and borne witness This is the Son of God. Son of God. If he is what you say, isn't his mission among men? Then why has he gone into the wildlands where there are no men? Yes, why? When will he come back? Did he tell you? No, he did not tell me. When the voice of the Lord first called me to be his servant, I too went into the wilderness. To be near God? Yes. And to be sure that you really heard Jehovah's voice? Oh, no, I was sure of that. No, to be sure of, of myself, of my own worth and fitness. A man so summoned cannot doubt the call. Only his own mortal weaknesses and frailties. He must make very sure of himself. And during 40 days and 40 nights, he ate nothing, and he hungered.
And the tempter came to him, saying, If you are the Son of God, command these stones to become loaves of bread. This written man shall not live by bread alone by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. And the tempter took him to the holy city, and they looked down upon it from a pinnacle of the temple. And the voice said, If you are the Son of God, throw yourself down. For it is written, He will give his angels charge of you, and on their hands they will bear you up, lest you strike your foot against the stone. You shall not tempt the Lord your God. And the tempter took him to a high mountain and showed him the kingdoms of the world and the glory of them and said to him, All these will I give you if you will fall down and worship me. Be God, Satan. For it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God, and him only shall you serve. Maybe three weeks ago, horsemen, a whole troop, they tied his hands, flung him on a horse, and rode off with him. Herod's men. Did they take him toward Tiberias? Uh, no, south. To Machaerus. That's what the followers figured. <laughs> if only he had gone a little farther away, into the Decapolis, or, or the Transjordan, or... Or he hadn't spoken so sharp about the queen. He's a good man and a brave one. A great man. No greater was ever born of woman. Yes. Well, uh, I'm off for Agilon if you're heading that way. No. No, my path leads to Galilee. in the fortress of Machairus. I am merely fulfilling the word given me by the Lord Jehovah. You've been stirring up the people, causing discontent, disturbance. Would you not shout out if you saw a blind man walking to the rim of a precipice? If you'd kept to your baptizing and preaching of Jehovah, you'd be a free man now. But you, you had to proclaim judgment against me, my wife, the whole Herodian line. A ruler should set an example for his people of humility, reverence, devotion to God. Have you forgotten it was my father that built the temple? And never entered it. A king has a thousand demands on his time. Neither my father, my brothers, nor myself have ever interfered with the scribes, the priests, the temple. Not even with you, you shouter of doom. We've been more than tolerant. 
A man does not serve God by ignoring his commands. That seems to be the way you serve me. I am your king, you know. I seek to serve you. <laughs> By the greater service I can render any man, be he king or slave. By calling on him to repent his sins before it is too late. Sins, sins, sins. Can't you ever talk of anything but sins? Particularly my sins? Shouting insults, treasonous insults, the length of Jordan. Turning my people against me. If your people no longer respect you, I am not the man to blame. Then who is the guilty one? Name him. I'll imprison him instead. My father would have had you strangled months ago. You know that, don't you? Archelaus would have spitted you over a slow fire. If I dealt with you as my wife wants me to. But I respect your courage. I, I believe you really think these things that you say about ooh, repentance and all that. Possibly the Lord did give you certain things to do. But you can't do them from a prison cell, can you? Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, the Lord is with me. Yes, yes. But suppose you had your freedom. You could carry out your work better, couldn't you? Perhaps. Well, I don't want to stand in your way, but I, I can't have you denouncing me and my wife as you have been doing. So give me your promise to speak respectfully of my household or say nothing at all, and you're a free man. I will gladly speak well of you to whoever will listen. If you will repent, truly repent, and cast out that woman Herodias. But I am married to her. It was no marriage. She is your brother's wife. It is not lawful for you to have her. I am the king. I make my own laws. You, like every man, will have to answer to the Lord. God. God! Take that man and throw him into a dungeon. Behold the king, Herod Antipas, Petrarch of all Galilee, pouring his courage too late as usual. At least I don't slink behind draperies, eavesdropping like a scullion maid. I did no hiding when I was wed to Philip. He was a man, not a cringing, superstitious fool. Afraid of a half-demented wild man from the hills. I'm not afraid of him. No. No. It's a political matter. These accursed followers of his. They... Oh? It's an unarmed rebel that you fear. I don't fear this. I've heard all I want to on this matter. No doubt. You, the king. You'd rather plead with him, bargain with him. After all the things he said of me, the shame he brought on my name. He'll have no audience in the dungeon. He won't need one. When the word gets out that he lives, and it will get out, you know it will, men will say, Herod fears to kill him because he spoke the truth. Nonsense. You do think so. That's what you fear. That he really is a man sent by God. Oh, you fool. You drunken, craven fool. Hey, you 
you Zebedees. For yourself. Any luck? Luck? We've done nothing but strain water through our nets. To the south, the middle, and here. How about trying the north end tomorrow? Not us. We wasted a whole morning there. Well, fish or no fish, the nets have to be hung. Andrew. Andrew. Huh? Yes? The nets, remember? Oh, sure. That walk back from the Jordan must have worn you out. You've been half asleep ever since. No. No, just thinking. That John fellow? Mm-hmm. Only you could have heard him. Just once. One day he'll come to Galilee. Escape from Achiris or be released. Not while Herod Antipas lives. Even if he does get away, he'll likely head toward Philip's territory, not Herod's. Not if Isaiah's prophecy is fulfilled. I had Shalio read it to me again last night. The land of Zebulun, the land of Naphtali, towards the sea, across the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, the people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And for those who sat in the region in shadow of death, light is dawn. That could mean, well, something else, not just the Baptist. No. No, it must mean him. The fire, the sureness that he had. It was, it was like a light, like a great flame burning inside of him. Well, let's hope it does mean him, that it does come true. It will. It must. Hello. Good day, Andrew. You know my name. I saw you by the Jordan. You're the Nazarene. Simon. Simon, come here. Well, this is the man from Nazareth, the one who went into the wilderness. Oh, the carpenter. No more. No longer will I work with wood. Now my work is with mankind. This is my brother, Simon Bar Jonah. Simon? Just what work is it you do with men? I bring them hope, new hope, for the kingdom of God is close at hand and his forgiveness ready for all who repent and truly believe. That's what the Baptist meant when he said, one who comes after him. You, you're carrying on his work. He made quite an impression on my brother. You said quite a task for yourself. Is there anything I can do? I mean, anything we can do to help you? Teaching and preaching's not our line. Won't what? you be our guest in our house while you're here? I'll be honored. Well, it's no palace. We're not landowners, we're just fishermen. Follow me, and I will make you fishers of men. And on the Sabbath, he spoke in the synagogue at Capernaum. And they were astonished at his teaching. Truly, truly, I say to you, he who hears my word and believes him who sent me has eternal life. He does not come into judgment, but has passed from death to life. Truly, truly, I say to you, the hour is coming and now is when the dead will hear the voice of the Son of God and those who hear will live. There he is! Ah! I see him! I see him! I know you! I know you! You filthy Nazarene! Murderer! Killer! Destroyer!
What have you to do with us? Jesus of Nazareth. You've come to destroy us. I know who you are. You holy one of God. Be silent. Come out of him. on your feet. Master. Master. And all who saw were amazed. And reports of Jesus of Nazareth spread throughout the city. Yes, Jemith, the madman, the big fellow. He's staying with Andrew and Simon. They say he cured Simon's mother-in-law of the fever just by touching her hand. I don't care if it's sorcery or not. I'm taking my boy to him as soon as the sun sets and the Sabbath ends. And as sundown ended the Sabbath, they brought to him all who were sick or lame or possessed, until it seemed the whole city was gathered together about the door. Where did they all come from? Hard to realize that there's so many sick people in Capranium. And a hundred, even two hundred more outside the gate. What a day this has been. Andrew, hmm? how long have you known this man Jesus? Since you have? No longer? I saw him at the Jordan, but I didn't get a chance to meet him. When we went for the bench, we heard some men talking, saying his power, curing the madman, healing these people, that it was black magic, the devil's sorcery. Sorcery? Nonsense. The devil brings evil, not good. Even an unlettered man knows that. Oh, yes, I guess so. You know it's so. You're educated. What do you think of him? I, I trust him. You? Completely. I don't understand it. I can't explain it even to myself. But the way I feel about him. I'm just a fisherman. I feel at home among men like ourselves. But not with scribes and teachers and men with great knowledge. Yet this Nazarene reads the Torah as easily as any scribe. He speaks with the sureness of a priest. He knows more than any man I've ever met. Still, I like him. Yes, I, I like him. On the following morning, as the sun rose over the mountains on the far shore of the Galilean Sea, a man left Capernaum by the western gate, seeking solitude in the lonely hill. Is it morning already? Must be, the sun is up. <laughs> but I'd never get to sleep last night. I kept thinking about the Nazarenes. What's all that noise? Crowd outside, trying to get in the gate. I hope they haven't awakened him. Let's go and see. Good morning, Myra. Good morning. Breakfast ready? Not yet. Good morning, Andrew. And to you. Oh, those people. Don't they know our guest needs his rest? I shall quiet them. Andrew, wait. The healer isn't sleeping. He's gone. Gone? 
Gone where? When? Well, early, before daybreak. Are you sure? Yes, as I came to kindle the fire, he was leaving by the gate. But why? Well, I don't know. He didn't speak to me. I don't think he saw me. Did you say something to him last night? Only that he was more than welcome. Guest doesn't just leave without a reason. Your mother, she's always complaining. Simon, he cured her fever. Yes. Well, someone must have said something. I was the one who invited him. Whatever it was, we've got to find him. Go to your brother's house and ask him to start searching the city. We'll get James and John and cover the hills. Walking uphill is harder than rowing. Sit down and rest yourself. Why'd you slip away from the house this morning? Anyone in my family said anything to annoy you? No, no, they were most gracious. You're sure? Of course, I'm sure. Then why did you come up here? To be alone, to think and meditate. Are you finished? Yes. We better get back. Everyone's been searching for you. People have been clamoring outside our gates since sunrise, demanding to see you. Well, shall we start? Not to Capernaum, James. The whole city's waiting for you. Let us go on to the other towns, that I may preach there also. Rabbi, if you were looking for a catcher of fish, it would be different. I'll haul a net or draw an oar with any man. But to talk to people, help you preach, Take these Zebedees. They're smart, educated, even if they do work in their father's boat. Or my brother Andrew. He's thought of nothing but religion since he heard that John the Baptist fellow. They'll fit into your plans. But a fellow like me. You said you wanted to come with me. I did. I do. Then come you will. And so began the first Galilean mission, bringing a new light to those who had sat in darkness. Accompanied by Andrew and Simon, James and John, his first four disciples, Jesus traveled the roads of Galilee, bringing a new interpretation of God's kingdom to all who would listen. You have heard it said, an eye for an eye and a tooth for a tooth. But I say to you, do not resist one who is evil. But if anyone strikes you on the right cheek, turn to him the other also. And if anyone would sue you and take your coat, let him have your cloak as well. And if anyone would force you to go one mile, go with him two miles. You have heard that it was said, you shall love your neighbor and hate your enemy. But I say to you, love your enemies and pray for those who persecute you so that you may be sons of your father who is in heaven. In many places where he spoke, there were those who, having listened, hungered to hear more.
Each day saw Jesus' fame grow greater. Travelers carried reports of him throughout the land of Israel, even to Herod's fortress castle of Machairus on the desolate eastern shore of the Dead Sea, where John the Baptist was held prisoner. coal in all the land of Moab, prepared with the greatest of care. He didn't... Don't waste your lies on me. I don't want any. Well, now, look here. If you ever should, I can get you a charcoal that Hold you never your tongue. Didn't I tell you to bring the castle charcoal in new sacks? These are the best we have. The dust. It seeps through any cloth, old or new. Seeps through. There's more charcoal on the outside than on the inside. Ah, it washes off. How would you know? All right, bring it in. Put it down there. Be careful. Ah, look out, you clumsy ox. Stay where you are. You too. Turn sideways. Now, hold still. Bring the bags down here. We'll stack them. John? Master John? Master. Here I am, my friends. Master John. Master John. Jabel, Zilla, good, faithful friends. It will be easy. Easy. Next week we will overpower the guards and take the key. The guards do not have the key. Who does? The chief jailer. And we'll lay in wait for him. And have a hundred men hidden outside the wall to delay pursuit. I forbid it. But your life is at stake. Perhaps. Oh, master. Ordering one execution or a hundred means nothing to Herod. I'm still alive. Behold. I have been given the best cell. Permitted the luxuries of a lamp, a stool, a table. Even a longer chain than any other prisoner. But more than that, he has me brought to his chambers and he questions me at length. Master, don't trust him. Trust? I pity him. You? Offer him salvation for his soul and he draws back. He scoffs at the thought that I've been sent, but... And yet he will neither free me, nor have me put to death, as the woman Herodias demands. Yes, I pity him. Herod Antipas, who rules this tetrarch of a great land, lives in a frightful shadow world of doubt and uncertainty. Perhaps if I can speak with him enough, I may be able to convince him but, Master, is he worth the risk? May be the Lord's will that I am here. It may also be his will that we help you to escape. Until I know that it is, I will stay. But, Master... There is one thing you can do for me. Anything. Command us. I've heard rumors... whispers... of the acts of Jesus of Nazareth. Tell me all you know of him. Move faster, you soot-stained dog. Must you take all night to do an hour's work? And 
as they were carrying the body through the city gate of Nain, Jesus beheld the mother, a poor widow, weeping bitterly. And he said to her, Weep not. And then he touched the shroud, and he said, Young man, I say to you, arise. And the youth sat up and spoke. That's how it was told to me. They say that he is a great prophet, even that the Messiah himself may be walking among our people. Have you talked with men who have seen these things? No, Master. Only to those who have heard of them from others. The wonders were done in Galilee, not here. Yes, I must know. Be up. Go to Galilee. Seek him out. To Galilee? And when you have found him, ask him this. Are you he who is to come? Or shall we look for another? And then let me know. Let me know. to the north in the city of Capernaum on the shore of Galilee. Judith! Judith! Yes, father-in-law? My throat dry. Are my sons back yet? They will be soon. Oh, I'm weak. So weak. When I was a young man, even when I was not so young, I'd match my strength with any man in Galilee. I know. Elam has told me. And when we'd pull in the nets, I'd out-pull two men. Two strong men. Yes, father-in-law. But now I have no strength. No strength at all. You will have, someday soon, when your illness is cured. Cured? I'll never be cured. Of course you will. Now, what do I sniff for supper, sister? Breast of peacock or tongues of nightingale? A stew of last night's haunch of mutton. You worked late today. We fished at the far end of the lake. Father? Father? Is he asleep? I think he's afraid to hear how bad our luck was or how the large seine was torn. I thought that would make you stop pretending. Was the seine torn badly? <laughs> it wasn't hurt a bit. Our catch was fairly good. And you're not sleepy at all, are you? I am old, weak, and useless now, Father. Just keep taking the medicine as the physician ordered. Rest enough. You can't blame him. He's been taking that herb draft for over a year. I, I talked to him about the rabbi today. You know, the Nazarene, Jesus. You waste your time. Would it hurt to try? They say he has cured scores of people. They say, they say. Have you met any of them? One. Who? The mother of Simon's wife. She was sick with the fever for days. And then he touched her. Just touched her. And she was well in no time at all. Woman's gossip. I wonder. She told me so herself. Didn't Simon and Andrew go away with the man? Yes. James and John, too. Where did they go? They'll be back soon, perhaps tomorrow. How did you know? Well, Simon's wife told me. Promise me, when they come back, ask them to bring their master here. No. Why not, Father? If it is God's will that I be like this, no Nazarene can change it. I don't believe in such... Hey, 
dangers in on me. See them, hey there. Uh, a pair of plow pushing farmers from the look of them. <laughs> Judging from the dust on them, I'd say they were mule herders from a caravan. <laughs> well, if we are herders, we came to the right place for donkeys. <laughs> Good to see you. We knew you'd come back with a nap. Couldn't say away, eh, Simon? Well, you're wrong twice. I just came to see how you were taking care of the boat. And my name isn't Simon, it's Peter. Peter? Yes, the master renamed him Peter, after Petra, a rock, because he's strong, dependable, a regular foundation of a man. Bad gouge in the boat here. Yeah, those rocks off Kinnereth. You truly believe in the Nazarene, don't you? We wouldn't be following him unless we did. These tales of his ability to cure all manner of illness, there's truth in them? There is. That he can cure any man? Any man who has faith. Oh, your father's still sick? Take him to the master. Let him hear Jesus speak. And look into his eyes. He's too weak, too shaken with the palsy. And he'd never let us take him unless he believed. But you can convince him. You and your brother should be able to. How? When we aren't convinced ourselves. I wish I could believe, Andrew. Just as you do, but I can't. I know he's learned that he's cured some men, but there's nothing new in what he preaches. It's like any rabbi, any school. No, no, Elam, no. Oh, yes, it is. I heard him myself in your own courtyard when he said he hadn't come to destroy the laws, but to fulfill them. But you don't understand. By fulfilling, he means explaining, interpreting. We know what that means, don't we? The Pharisees have been interpreting the laws for centuries, explaining new meanings, new rules, new observances until no man but a scholar could live without breaking ten a day. No, no, Jesus speaks of God's law, as it always was, as it always will be. Not the twists, the turns, the confusions added by men. And he fulfills God's law by making it clear to every man. Even to men who can't read or write? Yes. To men so busy earning the daily bread for their families, they haven't time to turn scholar? The kingdom of heaven is for all men. For all men who have observed the laws. All the laws. The kingdom is for all men. For you and for me and for everyone. And four simple rules will unlock its gate. Just four? Four. Repent, believe, love God, love thy neighbor. It's as simple as that. I've heard the master say so. Not once, but many times. If it could only be true. If you want proof, why don't you go to the master and ask him? And look into his eyes as he answers. We'll talk with him. This evening or tomorrow. Why wait until then? Why not go now? The catch to unload? We'll help you. Well, we're not dressed fit for talking to a rabbi. He won't care. Well, our, our working clothes. That's what we were wearing when he asked us to go with him. Come. Let's get the fish ashore. Then we'll take you to the master. Let him convince you. Peter. Then you can tell your father. Take Peter. him to the Nazarene. Peter. Yes? There's no need to rush. Jesus left with James and John this morning. Oh, yes. See those cousins of theirs? I think so. James said they'd be back about sundown. Good. We'll wait for him at the city gate. Come, brother. Let's see if you can still wrestle a basket of fish. <laughs> All right. Don't you ever caulk a seam? <laughs> At every city gate stood a tax collector's stand. That, at the western entrance to Capernaum, was administered by Matthew Ben Helfi, publican. There will be two coppers. Two coppers each. Four altogether. Four coppers? Four. But I'll be lucky to get a denarii for the whole. I can't afford four coppers. Then stay out of the city and pay none. Master publican. Please, consider my problem. I pay the owner of the forest where I cut the wood. Rent on the hut where my family dwell. Tax on the house. Tax on grain, on fish, on meat, on salt. And all from what two loads of wood will bring. Four coppers. Eight, ten, twelve. That is a very nice catch. 
There will be three silver shekels. Does that make the payment easier? You know, we have a lot in common, fishermen. I dare say the fish hate you as much as the taxpayers hate me. But as long as they're fish, there will be fishermen. As long as they're taxpayers, there will be... Vultures like you. Well, well, son of Jonas. Backast, I have missed you these many months. I'm sure you have. A shekel's worth every working day. No, oh, much more than that. The tax has increased. All right, all right. Get this other downwind. I heard that you two had become scholars, a follower of a young rabbi. We have, of Jesus, the Nazarene. Not that it's any concern of yours, unless you've got a tax on teaching or knowledge. I will consider it. And while I do, you walk the dusty roads, poor and penniless, and beloved by all men. And I will dress in silks and live in comfort, and watch my wealth increase as all men hate me. And then we'll see who is the happiest. Will it be you, Matthew? I think so, Rabbi, I think so. I'm an humble man, I have no hope for heaven. So I must be content with earthly things. A minor paradise bought with gold. I have position, security, comfort. I am a contented man. All men hate me because they envy me. If I can't find happiness with all I have, how can I find it with less? Where else could I turn? If there be a better way, tell me. Follow me. Jesus preaches that we should love our enemies, but a public. Leave me alone. Oh, leave me alone. But they'll be here any moment, bringing the healer with them. Uh, healer? Yes, healer. He returned last night. And if your sons talk with him today and bring him here, don't you want to be well, to be strong and fit again? Do you think I could? Oh, of course. I know you could. There's a, a magic in this man's hands. A power beyond all explaining. Oh, you'll see. Did you see the rabbi today? We saw him. Is he coming here? No. Couldn't Andrew or Simon persuade him to come? I doubt if the rabbi has time for such as us. He's too busy with his latest follower, Matthew, the public, and the whole city to pick from. He chooses a tax collector to be one of his disciples. Are we to ask help from a man like that? You, you're sure? We stood and saw and listened. There was no mistake. But what difference does it make? Are you going to let this kindness to a publican stand in the way of your father's health? You know we wouldn't. It's more than that. Andrew says one must have faith in order to be cured. How can we have faith in a man who is a companion to publicans? That night, the publican, Matthew Ben Helfi, gave a great feast to honor the man he had decided to follow. And many of the tax collectors of Capernaum sat at meat with them. I was hoping you'd come. Only to see if you and James and John still followed a lover of tax collectors. What if the tax collector is no longer a tax collector? <laughs> Matthew has pledged himself to give all his wealth to the poor and follow the master just as we do. But come, come inside with me, talk with him, learn for yourself. 
We've seen enough from here. Disgraceful. Utterly disgraceful that a man who sets himself up as a teacher can choose the company of publicans. Not only that, but to allow his followers to drink, gorge on a day of fasting. Today, not one of the great days to observe, but one every truly learned man should know. All Pharisees observe it. And our scribes. But either this Nazarene carpenter has never heard of it, or cares so little for sacred law that he ignores it. I wonder which excuse he would give. Why not ask him? They're coming out. You, my man, one question. Why does your master eat with tax collectors and sinners? Why, he has every right to... Those who are well have no need of a physician, but those who are sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners to repentance. The disciples of John fast often and offer prayers, and so do the Pharisees. But yours eat and drink. Can you make wedding guests fast while the bridegroom is with them? The days will come when the bridegroom is taken away from them, and then they will fast in those days. And no one puts a piece of unshrunk cloth on an old garment, for the patch tears away from the garment, and the worst tear is made. Neither is new wine put into old wine skins. If it is, the skins burst and the wine is spilled and the skins are destroyed. But new wine is put into fresh wine skins and so both are preserved. Rowell have no need of a physician. Hmm? This afternoon at the shore, when Peter said the kingdom of heaven was for all men, I wanted to believe. But I still had my doubts. And I, too. Particularly after Jesus was so friendly with Matthew. Tell me, would the Nazarene choose unworthy men as his followers? Men too lowly to enter the kingdom? No. No. And yet he chose Andrew? Peter, James, John, fishermen like ourselves. And now the publican. Certainly, if such a man is worth... Put it down. Let us through, please. Let us through, friend. We have a very sick man here. Master speaking. Please. Oh, hey. For everyone who asks, receives. And he who seeks, finds. Let's take it around to the rear. You both know me, and you know whence I come. And I am not come of myself. But he that sent me is true, whom you know not. But I know him, for I am from him, and he hath sent me. Our authority is the scripture, which we have scanned, studied. By what authority do you speak? The father who sent me has himself borne witness to me. His voice you have never heard, his form you have never seen. And you do not have his word abiding in you, for you do not believe him whom he has sent. You search the scriptures because you think that in them you have eternal life, and it is they that bear witness to me. Yet you refuse to come to me that you may have life. How can you believe who receive glory from one another? Do not seek the glory that comes from the only God. Master! Master! Our apologies, Master. We couldn't get to the door. This is our father, Master. Cure him of his affliction, as we know you can. Take heart. 
Your sins are forgiven you. How dare he speak so? Who can forgive sins but God alone? Blasphemy, blasphemy! Why do you question in your hearts? Which is easier to say, your sins are forgiven you, or to say, rise and walk? But that you may know the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins. I say to you, rise, take up your bed and walk. In the early days of his earthly mission, Jesus' activities centered in the land of Galilee. His authoritative teachings and his miraculous ability to heal the afflicted drew people like a magnet. They came in such numbers demanding his ministrations by day and night. And to rest. He told his disciples to have a boat made ready for him, lest the crush of people grow too great. He withdrew from the cities, but there were many who followed along the shore. What's wrong? What's happening? I don't know. People are coming from the village. Our tenants are joining them. They're going towards the mountain. Is there a fire? A glow in the sky? Let me see, woman. Let me see. You there. Is that you, Ezra? Yes, Master Javen. Come here. What's the meaning of this? Where are these people going? To hear the rabbi, the teacher of Nazareth. He's come here. Rabbi, what rabbi? What are you talking about? The teacher, the healer, Jesus who drives out demons. Oh. They say he came by boat with few men and a whole host followed. And you throw away your seat for such as that? But it's not far to where he... Go back to your hut! And you! All of you! Go back! You hear me? I know you hear me! Do as you're told or you'll regret it! Dogs! Ungrateful dogs! They'll be back once they've heard the man. Yes, but when? Tomorrow? The day after? Next week? While the grains spoil and the fruits rot and the animals go untended? What have servants, goat herds, the scum of the world to do with preachments? I have heard of this upstart from Nazareth. How he has disrupted half the rabble of Galilee? Well, he'll not do it here. Not if I can help it. <laughs> Shalom. 
still am like him. Where's the man named Jesus? On the mountain. He wishes to pray alone. Oh. Won't you stay here and rest with us? I would be honored. How long will he... Uh... No one knows. Stop. Move. Oh. There they are. Scores of them. See? From everywhere. Do you mean to tell me that all of those people have gathered to hear a teacher speak of his gods? Most from Capernaum. Some from even further. But there are five of my bond servants down there. Eight of my slaves, and I don't know how many of my tenant workers. Julian. Leaving their work undone. Disobeying my orders. Take the first unit. See if any of those people are armed. Question them closely and find out exactly why they are here. As you command, sir. Why waste time questioning them? Arrest their leader, the Nazarene. On what charge? That men listen to him? For causing them to, to neglect their work. Slaves, tenants, servants. If my fields are untilled, if my granaries lay empty, if I can't pay my taxes... You'll pay them. Search these people. You're wasting your time, soldier. We follow a leader who teaches us to love our enemies. You consider yourself an enemy of Caesar? I have only one enemy, myself. Who are you? What's your trade and where? Matthew Ben Helfi of Capernaum. I was a publican. Now I follow the Nazarene. Why? He asked me to. And you? Andrew Bar Jonas. I was a fisherman. Peter. Also a fisherman from Capernaum. And also a follower. I've seen you before. My brother and I mill the grain of Jabin the landowner. I've delivered flour to the garrison. Hey, more chaff than flour. And you? You don't look like a fisherman, a renegade publican, or a backcountry miller. I am a scholar. A scholar? From Galilee? From much farther. How much? From Cariot. And what is your name, Master Scholar? Judas of Cariot. Men to the ranks! And you, get back to your millstones. I'll go when I'm ready, oh. careful. Roman swine. I'm not afraid of them, and I'm not the only one. One day the fighting men of Virgil will... Quiet, my friend, quiet. Unless the Brotherhood has ordered you to start a revolt. I know nothing of any brotherhood. No. I said I didn't. No. I was once a member of the Zealot Confederation, but not now. Now I follow the Nazarene. And you place the word of one man above the freedom of your people? I place the word of God above any earthly command. No weapons, nor have they brought any food. They'll not stay long. Good. What of my servants, my slaves? Did you find them? One. I told him to return home. Did he obey? I didn't wait to see. Captain, I'll go down there. I'll find them. Give me a unit of your men. You. Well, only that necessary work can be done. Work to pay my taxes. I meant no offense. You go to your home, prepare food and drink for me and my men, and have it back here by sunrise. For all these? Your Excellency. Go. Yes, Excellency, as you command. The, uh, the man Jesus, their leader, he's not with the crowd. He's alone on the mountain. Oh? I could take two or three men. No, no. The more the rabble worry about their God and the hereafter in their heaven, the better for us. Had we spent the past centuries beseeching Jupiter and waiting for him to act, this land would still be free, and Gaul and Carthage and all the rest of the world. But to deny the power of the gods, sire. Oh, 
but I don't deny it. Actually, I thank the dwellers on Olympus that Rome ruled this earth and that the conquered peoples are the crushed, the crawling, and the broken ones. <laughs> Let them look to the next world, so long as this one is ours. And when the day had dawned, Jesus called to him those whom he desired, and they came to him. And he chose from them 12, whom he named apostles. Simon, whom he called Peter, and Andrew, his brother. James. And John, the sons of Zebedee. Matthew, who had been a publican. Thomas, called the doubter. James, son of Alphaeus. Simon, who had been a zealot. Young Philip. Bartholomew. Thaddeus. And Judas of Cariot. And these he chose to be with him constantly, that he might teach them and prepare them to be sent out to preach in his name, to be given authority to heal the bodies and spirits of men in his name. And when the twelve had been chosen, he came down with them and stood on a level place. People from all Judea and Jerusalem and the seacoast of Tyre and Sidon had come to hear him. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the meek, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall obtain mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness' sake, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are you when men revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Rejoice and be glad, for your reward is great in heaven. For so men persecuted the prophets who were before you. You are the salt of the earth. But if salt has lost its taste, it is no longer good. You are the light of the world. A city set on a hill cannot be hid. Neither do men light a lamp and put it under a bushel, but on a stand, and it gives light to all in the house. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and give glory to your Father who is in heaven. There's nothing to worry us here. The Roman Empire will flourish long after the name of Jesus is forgotten. Make way for one who is unclean, unclean, unclean. Make way for one who is unclean, unclean, unclean. Make way for one who is unclean, unclean. I beg you, a drink of water. Stand back. Oh. Let this be a lesson, son. Leprosy is the penalty of sin. He must have been very wicked. So evil that he would spiritually defile anyone he touched. And would they become lepers? 
Probably not. But they would be unclean according to law. Will he always be like that? I have heard that a few lepers having atoned for their sins have been cured. Then they must prove to a priest that they are unblemished. Sacrifice two doves, as it is written in the law of Moses. Then they are as other men. But this is very rare. Very rare. Now go, please. Leave our village in peace. I seek the healer of Nazareth, the one called Jesus. He's not here. He's gone away. <laughs> go, please. In what direction did he go? I'm not sure. Toward the east, I believe. Shalom. Shalom, Aleph. Try to clean. Be careful. Don't let his shadow fall on you, or you will be defiled. I seek the healer named Jesus. Have you seen him? I am Jesus of Nazareth. Master, if you will, you can make me clean. I will. Be clean. Master, my life is yours. I will spend my days telling men of you, of, of the wonder you have performed. See that you say nothing to anyone, but go show yourself to the priest and offer the gift that Moses commanded for a proof to the people. I will, Master. I will. Why tell no one? This is a great deed. The work of tremendous power. Something that all men should know. The master's besieged already by men who want their bodies healed. He is too kind to refuse them. But they give him no time to preach the word of God. Father, come, come! <laughs> Yourself. It, it must be another man. Please, please be quiet. Give him a chance to tell his story. I knelt before him, and he touched me, ever so lightly. And when I looked at my hands... Who touched you? Was it the one you were asking about? The rabbi from Nazareth? <laughs> I must find a priest and show him I've been clean of all blemish. Tell us who has cured you. Was it a man named Jesus? I can't tell you. Then it was Jesus. Admit it, ma'am. Have you no gratitude? Were there others there? Yes, there were. Then they'll tell us if you don't. Why can't you speak? He told me not to say anything. Jesus told you? The Nazareth. Yes, yes, yes. And it came to pass that he talked freely and spread the news so that Jesus could no longer openly enter a town without the people coming to him from every quarter. But there were others who came to Capernaum at that time. Among them, two scribes from the great temple at Jerusalem. Leprosy, you say? He actually claims to have cleansed a leper? By the touch of his hand. No prayers, no chants, no incantations. No pearls dissolved in vinegar, like that Egyptian physician, the oh. Joppa, remember? <laughs> yes, that rogue made himself a fortune. He charged his patients for the pearls. But no one actually saw them dissolve. <laughs> this Jesus is a far greater threat than any money swindling foreigner. He steals the minds of men. Yes, yes, so I understand. And the people are so impressed, uh, bewitched may be the word for it, they've deserted their proper leaders. Well, we shall order them to return. Yes, by order of Caiaphas, high priest of the great temple. That should solve the problem. No, why not? These people will accept the authority of the Nazarene over any order from Caiaphas. 
ridiculous. Uh, this is Galilee, and Jesus is here. And they have seen, or they think they have seen, that he drives out the demons of leprosy, and blindness, and disease. These people are convinced his power comes from God. Mm, I see, I see. Then our first step is to destroy that belief. Hmm. about it. We've got to get the master away from here. I agree. He's had no sleep in two nights. No chance to eat since dawn. No man can stand up under such a strain. And if he insists upon staying? Then we must make him go. Even if we have to use force. Make way! Make way for the emissaries of Caiaphas! Where is he who performs miracles? They bring him out so that we may see him. What is your concern with our master? Are not all men interested in the reports about him? That he has the authority to cast out the evil spirits of disease and madness from the afflicted? It is the truth. We bear witness to it. Never before has such a gift been given to a man. And for good reason. This uh, Jesus of Nazareth is controlled by Satan. It is by the prince of the demons that he cast out the demons. How can Satan cast out Satan? If a kingdom is divided against itself, that kingdom cannot stand. And if a house is divided against itself, that house will not be able to stand. And if Satan has risen up against himself, he cannot stand, but is coming to an end. But no one can enter a strong man's house and plunder his goods unless he first binds the strong man. Then indeed he can plunder his house. Truly I say to you, all sins will be forgiven the sons of men, and whatever blasphemies they utter. But he who blasphemes against the Holy Spirit never has forgiveness, but is guilty of an eternal sin. reputation increased among the people of Capernaum and spread throughout the land. And soon thereafter, he journeyed once more to other cities and towns of Galilee, and the twelve went with him. they were guests of the landowners, but many nights the sky was their roof, a fire their hearth. Did you find him? I did. Meditating and praying. He awakens an hour before dawn, goes off to a lonely place and prays. He walks all day long at a pace I have a hard time keeping up to. While we're resting in the villages, he preaches teaches and heals. Then at night while we're resting, he continues to pray. I worry about him. So do I. No man could stand a strain like that. Especially without sleep. Sleep that he isn't getting. Perhaps in his case, the sleep that he doesn't need. Everyone needs sleep, regular sleep, every night. I know, I know, but have you ever watched him closely when he returns from his absences? No, not especially. I know. I noticed last night. He looks as if he had rested. More than rested. As if he'd been born anew. Had a new strength, a vitality. But still, a, a calmness, an assurance. It's, it's hard to put it into words. But when I've watched him from a distance, when he's alone, he's, he's either walking or kneeling. It's an inner strength of the mind, the heart. Whatever it is, I wish I knew how to find it. Apparently, the master prays, and it is given to him. And you think we could, too? It is said, he says, the prayer and faith are for every man. I wonder if he would lead us in prayer. He prays alone. I suppose a man could get used to it. I'm used to prayers that you know by heart. In the family or 
in your home or in the synagogue. But one man alone, calling to the Lord, saying, God, listen to me. I don't think I could do it. I wouldn't know what to say. When I went to the Jordan and heard the man named John, whom they call the Baptist, he instructed his followers as to what words to use. That's what I mean. If I knew the words, I could say them. But are the words important? Isn't the thought the faith? Probably. But if I knew one prayer, maybe I could make up my own later on. The master. Master, we were talking about prayer, about calling to the Lord. I heard John the Baptist teach his disciples to pray. Master, uh, could you teach us? When you pray, you must not be like the hypocrites, for they love to stand and pray in the synagogues and at the street corners that they may be seen by men. Truly, I say to you, they have their reward. Which of you who has a friend will go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, lend me three loaves. For a friend of mine has arrived on a journey and I have nothing to set before him. And he will answer from within, do not bother me. The door is now shut and my children are in bed. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, Though he will not get up and give him anything because he is his friend, yet because of his importunity, he will rise and give him whatever he needs. And I tell you, ask and it will be given you. Seek and you will find. Knock and it will be opened to you. What father among you, if his son ask him for a fish, Will instead of a fish, give him a serpent? Or if he asks for an egg, will give him a scorpion? If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Therefore, when you pray, say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Amen. Our Father, who art, who art in heaven, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come. come. Thy will thy be done. Be done. On earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. bread. And our trespasses. And we forgive those who trespass against us. We forgive the Lord of the temptation. But deliver us from evil. Amen. 